The goal of the free fall lab is to estimate the acceleration of gravity for Raleigh. At sea level, G is 9.80 meters per second per second. Raleigh's about 450 feet above sea level, so that drops to 9.797 meters per second per second, which is still 9.80 meters per second per second to three significant figures. How do we do this? We will use a sonic ranger, known as a go motion device, uh, to generate the graphs of position versus time, uh, the position being the distance from the sonic ranger of a basketball, the velocity time graph, and the acceleration time graph. The go motion device will generate the data, and then that data will be dumped into Excel, which will then generate three trend lines to measure the acceleration of gravity for Raleigh. The best traditionally method is the position versus time equation or the final velocity not known equation, which is quadratic. Uh, the Excel trend line that will be used is a second degree polynomial, as the quadratic equation is a second degree polynomial. You will get that trend line and then the coefficient of the square term, t squared or x squared, is half the acceleration of gravity. So you're looking for that to be about 4.90 meters per second per second because double that is 9.80, which is what we're looking for. Another thing to be aware of here is when you drop the basketball, the time before you drop it is not free fall. Free fall is vertical motion where the only force is a gravitational force. While your hand is holding the ball, that's not free fall. After the ball is dropped, it is free fall until it hits the floor. And then at that point in time, you will get some data here that is uh, also needs to be discarded because it's not part of the free fall problem. You're looking for uh, this part of a parabola where the positive direction is down since uh, you're dropping the ball and the positive direction is taken to be down. The second graph is the velocity time graph or V is V naught plus GT since again the positive direction is down. So you will use Excel to generate a linear trend line and the slope of that trend line, you're looking for that to be uh, the acceleration of gravity, or about 9.80 meters per second per second. And then the third graph, which is usually not as good due to the extra processing that's required, is the acceleration time graph. So the acceleration is a constant. The acceleration of gravity at Raleigh, or any other place, is a constant. So this means you will fit um, a linear equation to this graph, and if the data were good, you would have a slope of zero, and the vertical axis intercept would be your indication of Raleigh's acceleration of gravity, the acceleration of gravity for Raleigh. Now let's generate the data using a GoMotion device, and then talk about how we drop that into Excel to generate the trend lines. Go to your desktop, open the Logger Pro software. Follow the detailed instructions on the back of the lab to operate the Logger Pro software used in conjunction with the GoMotion device. Basically what's going to happen is the, the GoMotion device will send out a sonic pulse, sound pulse at equal time intervals as the basketball falls to the floor. The speed of sound is constant, so this is just basically a distance is rate times time calculation. The go motion device knows when it sent the pulse, it knows when it gets it back, and so it can calculate the distance or Y position data for the basketball as it falls to the floor. To get the velocity information, the software uses the fact that the average velocity is the change in the position, in this case y, 
So the change in the y's that were generated divided by the change in time. So what this means is it takes two position time ordered pairs to create one velocity time uh, data point. By the same process, the acceleration on average is the change in the velocity divided by the change in the time. This means it takes two velocity time ordered pairs to create one acceleration time ordered pair. What this means is the uh, least amount of processing is required for the position time graph. And so your estimate of the acceleration of gravity for Raleigh is typically the best for uh, this, this position time graph. Still pretty good, but not quite as good historically is the velocity time graph. This because of the extra processing that's required. And generally, the acceleration time uh, data is not as good because it requires the most processing of all three graphs. Once you get this data uh, from the, the GoMotion device and the Logger Pro software, you need to open up Excel and paste this data into the first four columns. Then you're going to use the insert scatter plot. It must be a scatter plot to generate these Excel, uh, the graphs from which the Excel trend lines will be created. So block off the first two columns containing the uh, time and position data. Then do the insert trend line, select polynomial, and then second degree polynomial, and then check the boxes that say, that say display the uh, equation on the graph and display R squared. R squared is called the coefficient of determination. The closer it is to one, the better your data set is. For example, if R squared is 0.98, that says that 98% of the variation in the position with time is explained by your trend line, and the other 2% is due to random error or other factors. To generate the velocity time graph, you need to block off the time column, column 1, and the velocity column. To do that in Excel, you need to depress the control key uh, after you've blocked off the time column. Block off the time column, depress and hold down the block off the velocity column. Then, again, insert scatter plot, and then insert trend line, except this time it is a linear trend line. Once again, show the equation and R square on the chart. And then lastly, you need to create the acceleration time graph. Block off the time column, column one. Depress and hold the control key. Block off the acceleration column, column four. Then, once again, insert scatter plot. And then insert trend line. This time it should be linear. And so you're looking for a slope of zero and the y-axis intercept, vertical axis intercept, to be the acceleration of gravity. Let's create three separate data sets, one each for the position time graph, a separate one, copy and paste, create a separate data set for the velocity time graph, and then copy and paste another data set for the acceleration time graph. This is because as you're editing the data to, for your position time graph, you do not want changes in, in that graph to affect what happens in any of the other two graphs. Now let's quantify the error when comparing to an accepted value, which we have for Raleigh, one uses the percent error. That is the error as a percent of the accepted value. And so that becomes the measured value or the experimental value for which you have three from the position time graph, 
from the velocity time graph, from the acceleration time graph. And so that would be the uh, experimental or measured value minus the accepted value as a percent of the accepted value multiplied by 100 to move the decimal place two places to the right. When comparing two experimental values, such as comparing uh, the G for Raleigh from the position time graph to the G from the velocity time graph, use a percent difference, which is the absolute value of the difference divided by the average. So that becomes the difference divided by V1 plus V2 divided by 2, or simplifying twice percent error, that is at most, 5% is considered good. From 5 to 10% is considered fair, and above that is crude. Uh, lastly, what you want to do is to paste your graphs into a Word document and there answer the analysis questions, and that's it.